In this video, I'll show you how to make a knitted patchwork cardigan. It's a good starting point for beginners, and this cardigan was actually the first item of clothing that I ever knitted. It's really simple since it's only made up of rectangular pieces that we then sew together. There are no increases, no decreases, you just need to know how to do the knit stitch and the purl stitch. Here are the five panel pieces and the ribbing that we will be making in this video. For the patchwork cardigan you will need at least three different colours of yarn. You will also need a pair of 8mm knitting needles. I am using circular but you can also use straight needles. To begin we will start by making one of the front panels. To do this cast on 30 stitches. The first 15 will be in your first colour and the next 15 will be in your second colour. To have the variations in colour that you can see in the panels, I will be doubling up the yarn. So in this case, I have one piece of yarn that's white and one piece that is grey. Here I'm using the long tail cast on method, but you can use any method that you feel comfortable doing. I will link a tutorial in the description for a more clearer method of how to do this. But essentially, you'd use the long tail, wrap it around your thumb and then loop the working end of the yarn over to create your loop. Repeat this till you have 15 in this colour. Once you're done casting on 15, switch to your next colour. For the next patch, I decided that I wanted a solid colour, so I used two of the same colour pieces of yarn. To decide on your colour, you can plan it out to make sure that the combinations of patches match well together, however I just did it randomly, so you can choose whatever method that you prefer. So once you're finished casting on your 15 stitches, turn your work and now we're going to purl the first row. This cardigan is made up of very simple stitches, the knit stitch and the purl stitch. I will link a tutorial down below to show an in-depth tutorial of how to do this stitch, but as you can see it's very simple. After finishing the row in the first colour, we need to join it to the second colour. To do this, take the working yarn and wrap it over and then under the new yarn. Essentially, we want to just twist them together. Then take the new yarn and continue to purl as normal to the end of the row. Just make sure to hold both pieces of yarn tight for the first couple of stitches. Flip your work and now do a row of knit stitches. 
We will alternate between knit and purl rows till our work measures 5 inches or around 17 rows. Remember when switching colours to join the patches by twisting the two pieces of yarn together. Once you're done, it should look something like this. Cut off the yarn, leaving a tail long enough for you to secure it later. Now we're going to move on to our next set of panels. Take your new colour and begin the next row. Make sure to hold onto the old yarn tight for a few stitches, then you can secure the old yarn to the new yarn together with a knot. Do exactly the same when you reach the centre. Continue your rows of knit one row, purl one row until your new patches measure 5 inches. Repeat the same process as before to join the new colours to your work. Then do one row of pearls, one row of knits till your new set of patches measures another 5 inches.
To finish the front panel, cast off. To do this, knit two stitches. Then pass the first stitch you knitted over the second stitch you knitted and off the needle. You'll be then left with one stitch on your right needle. Knit another stitch and do the same. Repeat this process until only one stitch remains on your needle. Then secure it and you have finished your first front panel. In total for this cardigan, you will need two front panels, which are made of two patches by three patches. So make another one of these that we'll then use later. We have now finished making the two front panel pieces and we'll move on to make the back panel. This is made in exactly the same way as the front panels except it has 5x3 patches instead of 2x3 patches. So cast on 5 sets of 15 stitches in your different colours and knit and purl to create 3 rows of patches. The next step is to sew the shoulder seams. Place the front two panels on each end of the back panel. This should leave one column of patches free in the centre. Flip the panel so that the right sides of your work are touching. Then, using a darning needle and a whip stitch, sew the pieces together. Now we will move on to make the sleeves, and again they are made in a very similar method to the other panels. The sleeve panels are made up of 4x3 patches, however these patches are a little bit smaller than the others as they will measure about 4 inches by 4 inches. So cast on 4 sets of 12 stitches, then knit and purl till each patch measures around 4 inches or approximately 15 rows. Once you are done, cast off and you have finished one of your sleeves. Repeat this to create the second one.
To finish the sleeves, we need to make the cuffs that wrap around the wrist. So cast on 26 stitches of your chosen colour, still using the doubled yarn. To create the ribbing, knit 2, then purl 2. Do this for 9 rows. Once you're done, cast off and you have finished one of your cuffs. Repeat this whole process a second time for your second sleeve. Fold the cuff in half and sew along the edge using a darning needle and the whip stitch. Fold the sleeve panel in half right sides together and sew along the edge to create a tube. Make sure when sewing that you line up the patches so you get clean lines when the cardigan is finished. Do the same for the other sleeve.
Once all sewn up, attach the cuff to the sleeve. Pin the cuff evenly around one end of the sleeve right sides together. This can be a bit difficult because of the size difference between the cuff and the sleeves, so to make it a bit easier, split the cuff into four equal sections using markers or pins. To do this, fold the cuff in half, marking the folds with pins, then fold the other way and pin again. Using these markers, you can match up the cuff to the sleeve patches. You can also use more pins to make sure everything is evenly distributed. Once you are happy with your pinning, you can go ahead and sew. I would recommend that you take your time with this process and constantly check that your sewing is even. Now we attach the sleeve to the cardigan. Sandwich the sleeve inside the cardigan so that right sides are together and that the seam of the sleeve is facing down. Then pin to make sure the patches are lined up correctly. Sew the side seam and all the way around the sleeve. 
Repeat this for the other sleeve on the other side. We are now finished with the sleeves and can start on the waistband of the cardigan. This will be similar to the cuffs on the sleeves. Cast on 135 stitches, then knit 2, then purl 2. Repeat this to the end of the row. This creates the ribbing. Do this for a total of 9 rows and then cast off.
Attach the waistband to the bottom of the cardigan using a whip stitch. Make sure to evenly distribute the waistband by stretching it a little. Both pieces have the same number of stitches, so match up each stitch to ensure that it is even. For the next step, pick up 135 stitches around the neckline using the method shown in this video. Insert your needle into each stitch, yarn over and pull through. This is how you cast on your first stitch. Do this all the way around the neckline. Sometimes this method can be a bit difficult, especially on straight needles, so another way it can be done is similar to how we did the waistband. Cast on 135 stitches separately and then sew the finished neckline on later. Both methods work perfectly fine and I use the second way to make the pink cardigan that you see at the beginning of this video.
Once fully cast on, do 3 rows of knit 2, purl 2 ribbing. In this next row we'll be creating our buttonholes. We have a total of 3 buttonholes. To start off, knit 2, purl 2 and knit 2. So in total you do 6 stitches. Now we'll be making our first buttonhole. The first thing we need to do is to slip two stitches from the left needle onto the right needle. Then pass the first stitch that you slipped over, over the second stitch and off the needle. Then slip another stitch from your left needle onto your right needle. Do the same thing again and pass this first stitch that you slipped over the second stitch and off the needle. This forms our buttonhole. You can test the sizing to make sure that the button will fit. Now pass the first stitch that you did back over onto the left needle. Flip your work. We're going to knit one like normal and then slip that stitch back onto the left needle. Then knit another one through our new stitch that we just created and slip the new stitch again onto the left needle. We have created a total of two new stitches. Now flip your work back around. Slip the two new stitches that we created from the right needle onto the left needle. Now we're going to knit these two stitches as normal. This finishes our first buttonhole. Now knit two, purl two, knit two again to get through six stitches again. This 
brings us to the next point where our new buttonhole will come. This will be the point for our second buttonhole. So repeat the steps that we just did to create your second buttonhole. Once you've done this three times, you're just going to knit and purl around the whole row to finish the row. Once you've finished the buttonhole row, create two more rows of ribbing of knit two, purl twos, and then cast off. This completes the neckline.
Next, place the buttons on the opposite side to the buttonholes on the ribbing. Use the buttonholes to approximate the positioning. They should be about six stitches apart. Then sew them on using a darning needle. The last and final step is to sew in all the loose ends using a darning needle.
And with that, your cardigan is done. You can really customize this cardigan. You can make many different variations by changing the color combinations or the textures, or you can also increase the length by adding in another row of patches around the bottom. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. If you did happen to follow this pattern and make this cardigan, I would love to see it. Please tag me on one of my socials that can be found down below in the description. If you have any questions on how to make this cardigan or you get stuck in the process, again, leave a comment and I'd love to help out. Thank you so much for watching.